the one of the most every one of the most challenging films uh that I probably added to the list uh this season uh because first of all I think this filmmaker this filmmaker I know he's very important on the international scene uh he uh his name is Lee Chang Dong the name of the film actually is poetry it's from 2010 and the critics have already hailed it even back then saying it was an instant classic believe it or not but Lee Chang Dong was born in 1954 in in uh, Dagu which some consider the most right-wing city in South Korea he is a former high school teacher and an acclaimed novelist, becoming the Minister of Culture in a newly elected liberal national government back in 2003. He had been the Minister of Culture for many years. He turned to cinema when he was over 40 years old. He started he began making films after he was 40. And poetry was only his fifth film. And the film won Best Screenplay and the Jury Prize at the Cannes Film Festival, as well as winning 25 major international awards, including six for the leading actress, Yun Jung Hee. Uh, she won six, but I'll get back to her later on her life. Uh, his films are deeply dramatic explorations of innocence, lost, suffering, and alienation, with key themes centered on psychological trauma, driven by, the films are driven by a naturalism. His films are mainly a reflection of the repressive social and political climate of South Korea, as seen through the eyes of marginalized, non-heroic, mostly blue-collar people. He asks us, the audience, to examine themselves and to look at what society pushes under the rug, uh, especially in Korea. Uh, the importance of seeing uh, as he says it, is at the heart of this film, uh, leading to transcendence and transformation for both the character, the major character, and the audience. Uh, if you remember, the poetry teacher in the film says the most important thing in life is all about discovering true beauty in our everyday life. Up till now, you haven't seen an apple for real, he says. He says that in the first class, as the camera cuts to media, to really know what an apple is, to be interested in it, to understand it, he adds, that is really seeing it. What's difficult is not writing the poem, but finding the heart to write one. Demonstrates just how unnerving these realizations are to someone. For the word poetry, we must substitute cinema. This is me talking. <laughs> we must substitute cinema. This is not the first filmmaker to place a protagonist on a path of self-discovery that changes their perception of the world. But when have we ever seen a 60-something grandmother in the early stages of dementia through an adult education poetry class as a way of crafting a social statement and a film about self-absorbed patriarchal society's lack of human insight. We watch and come to see about South Korea, certainly, but also about ourselves. The subject matter encompasses poetry, dementia, sexual abuse, and suicide. Before we so much as meet media, however, we see an image that encapsulates what is to come. Floating face down in a river is the corpse of the young middle school girl, who we learn somewhat later has committed suicide. On a close-up of the body appears the film's title, Poetry. Uh, what a contradiction. What a contradiction. Written in English and Korean, creating an immediate contrast between the tracks of beauty and death that we discover at the heart of the film. And when we first see Mija, She's a self-sufficient small town pensioner who earns extra money cleaning for a wealthy elderly stroke victim. Pretty mundane stuff. She's also a self-absorbed aging beauty, chirpy like a skylark, as, she's, as someone says, who is too flirty and flighty to totally live in the real world. 
Uh, she seems like an unrealistic character who still feels and talks like an immature girl. Despite her age, but two and two incidents, one involving beauty and one involving death, will serve to bring about her transformation. One is Meiji's impulsive decision to take a poetry course at a local adult educational center, following her diagnosis that she is slowly losing her memory. After seeing the sign that reads, you can be a poet, she manages to finagle her way into the class and is rapt when the teacher tells everyone about the important thing in life is to see. Uh, poetry is all about discovering true beauty in our everyday life. And the involvement with death is thrust upon her by chance as she comes across the devastated mother of the dead girl crying out in the street and she's unnerved by the encounter. At home, when she asks her rude and especially remote grandson, Wook, about what she learned, he says he barely knew this classmate. And then she's summoned to meet the fathers of her grandson's friends and finds out that Wook was not telling the truth. He was one of six students who repeatedly sexually assaulted the girl, leading her to suicide. And the fathers, concerned that the truth could ruin their son's futures, are raising compensation money for the girl's mother in the hopes of keeping the story quiet or sweeping it under the rug. And Mija is expected to contribute. It is interesting to note that parents in South Korea tend to be overprotective of their children. Uh, and while we are aware that all societies have similar attitudes to sexual violence, there are variations in South Korea, especially with men. They think revealing the problem never helps anyone, even the victims. That is why they do not seem to feel guilty in covering up the problem. And she walks out of the first meeting with the men as if in a state of denial or disbelief. As she looks at a flower, she stares, if you remember, she stares at a flower and she writes blood, a flower as red as blood, sort of her reaction to what she just heard. Mija is completely shattered by both her now personal involvement and realizing the general horror and brutality of the world she lives in. All this while having to face the diagnosis of onset dementia and at the same time attempting to live and experience life fully so she can successfully write a single poem. As her teacher says, what's difficult is not writing, but finding the heart to write. And as Mija becomes increasingly aware of the corruption of the society in which she lives, the intensity of her quest for purity and poetry increases, at one point bringing her to see the mother, yet she cannot bring herself to admit who she is. We also see how the media tries to get at the story. And while Mija, at once unsuspecting of the reporter's motive, she does catch on quickly. And through her little adventures, with the Poetry Appreciation Society, where we see the men hijacking the festivities and readings by egotistically parading a would-be sensitivity, it serves to amplify the rape storyline, demonstrating the male sense of entitlement that runs through every layer of Korean society. But not all the men are unsympathetic, as we see in her encounters with the cop in the poetry group. Eventually, she will even raise the money in her dealings with the old man who has suffered the stroke. In fact, the director points out that his fit of apoplexy represents a disabled masculinity, and that through a sense of a macho man's sense of desire, he begs to be a man for one last time after having become ill and helpless, all despite the money and power he may have achieved in the past. And when Miji accepts that desire, she defiles her own body, much like the dead girl, at the same time turning the power and the influence of that machismo attitude back on itself in a highly pointed way. And while Lee, the director, does not make all the men unsympathetic, we can understand that Meiji's ability to open up to a deeper understanding of her place in the world becomes an act of resistance against the belief that the world doesn't belong to women like her, but the sort of men who can buy their way out of justice. Uh, and toward that goal, she will bring her grandson to justice as well. 
as she prepares him for what is to come. And the ideas of poetry, the film and the art form coalesce into the poetic realm of expression with Meej's all-consuming identification with He Jin, the young suicide victim, accepting the pain uh, of Agnes as her own, the life of the girl as her own. And with nowhere to be seen in the end, Meej speaks out with the voice that the girl would have wanted to leave behind. The two become one through the poem when Meej's voice changes into He Jin's. The audience can feel that the destinies of Mija and the girl are overlapping and that the two characters are now united as one. Mija's struggle to come to terms with what is important in life in the face of all she's learned is poetry's central dilemma. And the filmmaker resolves it in an especially elegant and I feel memorable way. Li Chang Dong wanted the audience to face He Jin at the end of the film he wanted people to remember her faintly smiling face and expression directly looking into the camera and to accept her emotions along with Mija's poem. Mija has gone after she has finished writing the poem. He wanted to make people feel Mija's absence while listening to her poem. Where did she go? We see empty rooms. He left the answer up to us. Picturing the film to have much to have much space as poems do, blanks that the audience could fill in, all and in, all in a sense it can be seen as an open film. The conclusion will be in our own minds. What happens to Mija? Through the art of cinematography and storytelling, we see how everything pieces together in this heartbreaking film. Motifs and actions in the opening are mirrored in the last scenes, including flowers, those that bewitch Mija outside the restaurant, and those in a vase at the dead girl's house, if you remember when she walks in. The river that flows in the opening shot streams through the last image of the film too, less a circle than a continuum. In interviews, he has expressed his feeling that poetry is dying. If poetry is an act of pursuing hidden beauty or truth, an act of questioning our lives, it can also be another form of art. It can be cinema in this regard. Cinema to him is also dying. While some films are massively consumed as ever, other films, films that I'd like to create, he talks about like this, Films I'd like to see are becoming more difficult to find. Films that make people observe the world with different eyes, to feel invisible beauty, to question life. Do these films still exist? Do you wish for those films to exist? These are the questions that he says he wants to ask. Young Jun, Yun Jung Hee has appeared as Mija has appeared in more than 300 films, as well as, a victor, as well as a victory at a national poll to select, this was in Korea, to select the greatest actress in Korean cinema history. She came out of a 16 year retirement to appear in this film. She'd already been retired for 16 years. It was a wise choice. She gives a performance of surpassing delicacy, unsurpassing delicacy. She displays a highly nuanced range of emotions as each situation peels layers off her personality and turns her into a different person by the end. She received the Best Actress Award from the Los Angeles Film Critics Association and in 2018, the Lifetime Award from the Korean Association of Film Critics. She passed away, sadly, she passed away in Paris in 2023 at the age of 79. The actor who plays old Mr. Kang uh, is a familiar actor in Korean cinema as well. He has appeared in over 139 films. Uh, and Kim Jong-gu, who plays Officer Park, the cop, has appeared in over 64 films. Uh, these are the actors in the film who all all uh, I thought were excellent. I thought the, the filmmaking was terrific, the revelations that come in the film and the way Mija deals with them. 
uh, her journey is an exceptional one. I know that it's a challenging, I realize it's a challenging film because we don't all know some of these things that I spoke of in Korean society. Uh, but if I can clear up any more, I will. Uh, and now I'd like to turn the discussion over to you and uh, your feelings about the film and any questions you might have had. So who's going to start? I know this is a toughie to weigh in on, but uh, okay, Jackie, I see your hand. Jump right in there. I'll do it for you. We uh -huh. liked it. One thing I will say right off the bat is I thought it was too long. It was heart-wrenching. It was depressing. It was beautiful. It was insightful. Two things that really stood out to actually both of us was that no matter what the boys had done, they were still all, except for her grandson, they were still all unbelievably respectful of her. And I thought that was really interesting. It was the age factor. They weren't respectful of the girl, but they were respectful of grandma. And the highlight, I thought, because um, I think if you were paying any attention, you guessed everything that was going to happen. But it still was okay. It, it worked well. But I thought the highlight was when she kept looking up in the tree, sitting on her porch, and then her neighbor started doing it. At first, her neighbor couldn't figure out why she was <laughs> yes. doing it. And then she's doing it. I love that. I mean, we go out and we look at the sunset all the time. And as people walk by, they go, what are you looking at? And it's you, you kind of want to make up something. <laughs> but I thought that was great. But anyway, so it, it, I agree. It was a very challenging movie. And it was, I was... I'm really intrigued to see what everybody's going to say about it. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I think, you know, what you're saying is so much a part of the movie. Uh, uh, just looking at the tree, because if you remember, she does the same thing with the apricots at the at the mother's, uh, where, where the mother works, where the, the apricot trees were. If you remember, she looks down, she sees the apricots that have fallen off the tree. She is looking at everything. She's beginning to observe the world in a whole new light. Uh, and, I, and, and, and the contrast of a woman, you know, when, when, you know, coming up with this whole idea of a woman who's facing dementia and now looking at the world, you know, uh, her memory may be going, but she's capturing everything she's seeing uh, and, and giving us insight into maybe doing the same thing. You know, just as you said, you know, you could look at the sunset. People say, what, what are you looking at? And they'll look up and maybe it'll click with them. You know, they'll, they'll say, wow, that's really beautiful. Well, wow, that tree is really special, whatever it is. But eventually, hopefully it'll click in. That's what you hope for, you know, and then they'll understand what poetry is. Uh, they'll understand what beauty is. Uh, so I think that's, you know, the, the film serves that certainly serves that purpose. Uh, thank you. Uh, Karen. Um, well, I particularly, let's see. Okay. Yes. I particularly enjoyed the imagery, the, the flowers all, uh, and, and even she, uh, the way she dressed, she was like a flower. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and you know the field and all the different things, just her walking through them, um, and um, you know, and then becoming the um, the voice of uh, speaking for um, Agnes, the girl. At the end, she became her voice because uh, no one else had had given her a voice. But that yes. that was my thoughts. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for a wonderful again. film. <laughs> that you're quite welcome. And, and that is, you're absolutely right. That is what part of poetry is to give voice to the unspoken. Right. Uh, you know, and, and that's what she did. She realized that by the end. Uh, great realization. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Dorothy. Dorothy, you have to unmute. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I had a hard time reconciling the fact that she had Alzheimer's. It seems to me that that didn't have to be said in the movie because I don't think she did anything that anybody without Alzheimer's would have done under the same circumstances. What, what was the point of the Alzheimer's? Well, I think what what is is uh, well. First of all, at the beginning, she gets the diagnosis. It doesn't mean she's got it right away. It's it's you know they're seeing the onset. They're seeing problems, 
And I think it's important because this character is losing, is losing her memory. And at a time now when it's so important that she's learning to observe the world, it is the, it is the contradiction. It's introducing a contradiction. You know, here is a woman that's losing her mind or losing her memory and yet struggling so hard to, to look at the beauty of the world, to try and grasp all of this, which is why she takes the poetry class. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, as I said, he likes to deal with characters who represent either marginalized people, people who are going through a struggle and uh, use them as the central character uh, to create that conflict uh, within the story. It creates a conflict within the story uh, for the character you know, what she's fighting against and what she's trying to deal with. I mean, at the same time, she's dealing with her own problem. She's dealing with what her grandson did uh, and, and right, having to deal with that. You know, it's it's so it sets up this conflict uh, for us, the audience. You know, it's as I said at the beginning, you know, where where have we ever seen a film like this where a central character is facing this kind of problem and facing this other kind of problem, a societal problem? You know, he's bringing two things to the fore here. Uh, you know, they'd also, they also don't want to deal in Korea. It was very difficult, Korea, China, Asia, very difficult to deal with these things with these right. diseases yeah. and, and therefore here it is, you know, he's bringing it out to the forefront. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a very controversial director, uh, as you can imagine, for dealing with these subjects. You know, he's, he's bearing the soul of Korea in this film. I mean, treating the men the way he does, he is so critical of their behavior. Uh, and, and that's, you know, he wants them to know he's pointing a finger and and believe me, if the Koreans are watching the movie, they're either hiding their heads or hopefully the women are going home and beating their husbands. So, uh, you know, one or the other. So uh, that's that's why I say that. <laughs> Thank okay? you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Dora. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I really appreciated that movie. And I think that she, she didn't want to confront what she had she never told anybody i she says that she talks to her daughter every day and i don't think so uh if, if she talks to her daughter where she tells their her lies because she never tells her what the doctor said and also she doesn't want to confront her grandson about what he did she's always had this hesitant she puts the picture of the girl to see what his reaction is. But this this boy is like, uh, he's, he's like, his mind, he's only watching TV and, and does not accept what he has done. Um, I think that that's what he, he wants. I don't think he's hiding it. I think he's not accepting that what he did was not okay because all her friends were doing it. So if it was all of them, then it was okay. I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. No, no. It it went way well. She's in a sense of denial of the, of the disease. Of denial of I what mean, she had. Yeah. Well, you know, it it it's interesting because you know it was mentioned the way she dresses. Uh, you know, okay. she wore little girl dresses. She was, she saw herself as, as, as a little, you know, as a little flower, as was said, a little girl. Uh, she spoke in a little tiny voice. Uh, she, you know, but where her grandson was concerned, she was in a sense of, you know, wanting to find out without confronting. Uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, she's a woman in a Korean society. They don't always confront things head on. Uh, right. and, and she wanted him to confess, uh, and she worked as hard as she could to get him, you know, to make him, you know, admit what he did. And if you remember what happens is she goes to the cop and she tells him, uh, she tells, uh, officer Park, 
uh, without us seeing it, she tells him what's wrong and he senses something's wrong. He's sensitive. Uh, most of the men aren't sensitive to this. They think she's nuts. And, and he, uh, you know, he's, he's sensitive to it. And she obviously tells him and she prepares him. You know, she cleans his fingernails. She wants him to Again. purify himself. Before he, he sees his mother. Before he goes, no, he's not seeing his mother. He's going to jail. He's going to right. jail at the yes, end. Yes, but, but, yeah. he, but she tells him that it's because his mother is coming. It's, well, she doesn't tell him that he's going come. to jail. Yeah, well, she, she doesn't want to tell him. But he's yes. because he would run away. He would, God knows what he would do. She's trying to ease him into this thing and ease herself into this thing. Into the, you know, this is not easy to accept what her grandson did. Right. Uh, right. I, I, you know, one can imagine. Uh, and I think, you know, judging from her character, what we see in the film, it's understandable how she's dealing with it. Because she does work in a sense of denial. She does right. work in a sense she's 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 resisting men who want to put her and the whole incident under the rug. Uh, and it's not easy uh, right. for a woman. I mean, no, it just, right. You know, it, it doesn't. Yeah, doesn't even work even that when way. she when she was sent to confront the mother of the girl, she was not able to do it. No, it's it's difficult she, to do. Right, she denied it to to the other to the other uh, parents that that no, I couldn't see her, and then and then when she sees her, right, it, then when she sees yeah. her, she she was embarrassed, and then that's why she she left. But but the other but the mother of the girl didn't say anything, so I guess she looked at her and then communicated like looking at her and she looked at, I think they communicated each other uh, but didn't say anything possibly uh, I don't you know I don't know if she really she really knew she really understood you know and and uh, it was it was it was a difficult situation for her Very you know, as I said she was in denial yeah and yeah. even yeah even he her dealing with this old guy who was sick um, I think it was a very difficult situation with her. And yeah, well, and he too. He was not easy. Uh, no, he was not an easy. You no, know, he was. It he was, was a patriarch. Job. Yeah, he was not easy. She she needed to, you know she needed to earn some extra money, and she figured out. I love the way she figured out how she was getting the money. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, I mean, it was not nice, but she did it. She got it out of him. You know, this right. was a penny pincher. If you remember, even his, I think his daughter said it. Uh, I mean, this guy was not going to let a buck go. Uh, and, and she got it out of him. Uh, yeah. So he, I think putting yeah. the squeeze on him was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, is this, go, is this a, are, are you, are you, um, what do you say? What is, are you blackmailing black me? Right. Are you right. doing blackmail? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's blackmailing all men at that point. Okay, thank you, Dora. Thank you, okay, Bobby. I, I know you had your hand up. Oh uh, yes, I did. It's very interesting because we never really got the whole story about the daughter. And you know, this kid, the, the the daughter didn't seem to have much to do with her son. She didn't pay for him. She didn't look like she saw him at all. Um, I have a grandson who was adopted from Korea. And I had friends that came from Korea and they were telling me, you know, now he's 23, but they were saying how, you know, what a shame this is if somebody is, you know, she said the daughter was divorced, but who the heck knows? You know, what a shame it was, a real shame if a girl had a baby out of wedlock and they immediately put them up, you know, for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, um, and also she had said anything to the, to the girl's mother she would have given the thing away. I mean, she was sent there to plead with the girl's mother and she couldn't do it. She couldn't plead with no. her because, no, she just couldn't do it. I mean, at that point, I think she knew what she was gonna do was yeah. uh, tell the policeman because they we had also heard that they were safe except for the police because the girl was underage. Yeah, well, I think what's, what, and, and don't forget, you know, as I said, we're left to wonder what happens. Well. The kid's going to go to jail. The kid's going to get tried. She could bring him to justice. But so are his friends. Yeah. And, and she wanted the mother to get paid. 
She wanted the mother to get oh, paid, absolutely. and she did. She had a she had a double edged sword. She went after. She managed to get the mother paid, and she was going to bring the kids to justice. So the fathers are, are also going to not get off. I mean, this is this is what she did. Uh, and and I thought that was you know she did something very brave in the end, uh, which was terrific. Uh, you know, and also we know if if you know in watching Korean films, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen Parasite. Uh, if you've seen the film Parasite, you know that the education system is stacked against those who are on the lower rung of the social order. Uh, they rate they rate people by where they go to school and if they can even get into a college. Uh, it's very tough. Uh, it's a tough system. Uh, so, you know, you have that as well. Uh, that they're dealing with, uh, why it's so important to keep, you know, make sure the kids don't get into trouble. Uh, but it is, it is. Uh, this is something that's a major problem, not just in Korea, it's also a major problem in Japan, uh, these kinds of situations. Uh, so thank how you, did, Bobby. Just another uh, one of the houses? Yeah, sure. How did they ever yeah. think she was going to get the money? I mean, are these men stupid? How did they think she was ever going to be able to get the money? Well, they didn't care. They didn't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, they didn't care. Just get it. You know, they don't care. They were using her. You know, just if you, you have to pay, otherwise, you know, what's going to happen? But she took care of them. Yeah, she yeah. took care of them. Thank you. Uh, Sandra Fuss. Okay. I, I, I too, thought this was a beautifully crafted film. And, you know, poetry is often reading between the lines and they presented Miha as an, a, a naive, ignorant woman obsessed with her beauty, abused by her grandson. But in the meantime, throughout the film, he developed um, that her, you saw her backbone develop and how she played the old man for the money. That was that was all along when she agreed to sleep with him. And when she went to the cops, uh, I, I thought it was just beautifully done the way they developed that. You didn't realize, well, I picked it up what was happening, but in the meantime, she's acting like this sweet, innocent thing. And, and she's duping the other men too, th thinking that she's gonna go along with it. I thought it was really cleverly done as well as being very pretty, beautiful film. Anyways, uh, Shelley, I think we saw this once. Yeah, I did do it. I did do it for FIU. I did do yeah, it Yeah, that's FIU. probably where but I you saw know it. my role. You know my role. You've seen it a second time, and now you've really seen it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a wonderful film. Thank you. You're, you're quite welcome. You know, it's also what you're saying, you know, is, is and, and what we've been talking about, you know, is, as I mentioned at the beginning, He's the, the fingers he points at the males in society also appears as a poetry reader. You know, even even the detective, his his poem is is rather uh, you know scatological. I mean, he gets into crazy stuff, and uh, you know we hear that, and that's you know that's the men being wise guys too. Uh, that's the way they see poetry, uh, but uh, but the fact that he was in the class was very interesting. Uh, you know, he's a cop. Uh, and, you know, and that's another thing with Korea. There's a tremendous amount of corruption uh, in Korea, uh, whether whether in the police force, whether in business. Uh, these are these are things that he's he's not dealing with uh, head on, but he's sort of skating with. And, and his next film that he did uh, right after this, which is it really his latest film, it's a few years old now, is called Burning burning and it gets into a whole other situation in Korean society of the haves and have nots. Uh, very interesting film. Uh, but uh, thank you, Sandra. Uh, who else? Anybody else want to weigh in on this? Uh, ah, Barbara. Terrific. Thank you, Barbara Tate. Mute there. Okay. Um, I loved everything about the film. My feeling at the end was she went over the bridge too. That was what I yeah. felt. And that she had, I don't think the daughter ever spoke to her. And I think she was just tidying up all the loose ends 
She got the money, she paid them off. And when you were talking about looking at the tree, it's interesting that when she was looking at the tree, when they took the grandson away, she was she was looking. And then when she turned around, he was being put into the cop car. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't anything yeah. about it I didn't like. I, I, did, I didn't even find it long, although it was. I, I didn't find it long. I was just... Loved yeah, it all. I, well, that's uh, thank you, and, and I mean, and that's another trait. I mean, a lot of Korean films are all long because they want to tell a story. I mean, they they get they want to get you lost in the story, uh, and uh, I think he accomplished that. I mean, his films are long, but I think what he said, and when I reiterated his words at the end, is these are the kinds of films we really don't get to see too often. Uh, you know, that are this complex that it, this, re, this revealing of a society uh, and this well-performed, uh, well-directed, very tightly directed. Uh, so thank you, Barbara. And Marilyn. Yeah, oh, I saw the game of badminton as a symbol of her strength. And uh, that, that she had that strength within her and over the course of the film, it came out, but that's to me was, was why they kept showing badminton yeah yeah i mean it was it was you know and when she's playing and and i love it because that's when the reporter appears uh to ask the questions and she's he's he's asking questions and trying to be friendly and she begins to see where he's going uh you know again a man you know not being straightforward uh you know cajoling her uh, into into uh, talking about it and admitting it so this guy can report the story. Uh, you know, and who knows how he would report that story. That's the question. Uh, so yes, I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn London. So my question is, was he trying to sort of make a statement? Or if, if she didn't come out at the end and tell the policeman about the, the kids and what they did. Was the whole thing supposed going to be swept under the rug? They made the settlement. They paid her the money. They would the, the kids would never be accountable. It would be swept under the rug. And is that what he was saying goes on there all the time? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it does go on. In other words, the reporter wouldn't have a story. If she didn't talk, the reporter wouldn't have a story because she, they would go to jail. So then the reporter gets the story. But uh, yes, it would be swept under the rug. It's, it, it's a common thing to pay off the victim of a crime, whether it be rape, whether it be murder, <laughs> you know, anything. Uh, there, it, is, it is common uh, to pay off the victim of the crime. Well, the victim of the crime will get paid anyway, uh, or the victim's family. If, if the victim was killed, uh, would get paid, would get compensation. Uh, and uh, in the hopes that they'll, they, they'll go away, they won't well, press but charges. Basically, the victim or the people will get paid, but nobody's held accountable and they could just go right. on and do it. And yeah. Right. Yeah. Go on and do it again. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, uh, you have to remember, Korea became a police state. Uh, after the war, uh, and it went through several kinds of uh, churnings in government. Uh, it was a police government, then it was a democratic government, then it failed, and then it became a, an authoritarian government. And and, and uh, even in uh, the early 2000s, it became a democratic government again. But the, the man responsible, who was the president, uh, was a successful attorney, uh, yet he got caught up in a corruptive in a corruptive act, and he wound up committing suicide. Uh, the president of the, the, the country. Uh, so yeah, uh, corruption is a very common is a very common element in Korea. Uh, still going on. There's still a tremendous amount of corruption. Uh, wow, that, that that does not fare well for you know. They say, no, I, I'm sure it's, one I'm of sure our allies. It's no, global. I'm sure it's global, and those who can afford it. Get away with it. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Need we point fingers? Uh, anyway, uh, 
Uh, Sandra, yeah. you had something else? And then Dora. Yeah, okay, just a, a question about the scene where Wook is arrested. She just calmly, would you talk about it? She's calmly playing tennis, uh, playing badminton. Uh, he get, Nobody says a word. The mother's probably looking from upstairs and nobody says a word. She just doesn't say nothing. Yeah. No, the she, mother she, hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah, no, she had guy. He was playing. Yeah, he was there. playing with the kid. Yeah, no, she wasn't. She wasn't there yet. The the cop was playing with the kid. Did and uh, then he played with her, and he the kid's arrested, but she doesn't say anything. The kid doesn't say. Just I wonder if you. Talk yeah, there was, there was there was actually there was not nothing more she could say. She was she got you know she prepared him, and this was now you know, up to what would happen in the scene. I don't think there was anything for her to say in that. Uh, she, as I said, she prepared him. She purified him in a sense uh, for what he was about to be subjected and to. And he uh, didn't say anything to her, the kid. He no, didn't. no, he knew he, because he, in a sense, he, he, he knew he was caught. I mean, he knew when they were putting him into the car, this is it. Uh, you know, and he would probably see his friends uh, in the same in the same police station. Uh, but you know, he was a kid, uh, yeah. and I think he, he was frightened. Number one, uh, he was respectful of the police. He couldn't do anything. And what could she say? You know, at that well, point, what could she say? Well, it was great accolades to a woman in in that society in her own quiet way, doing something. It was very well done. Anyways. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dora and then Marilyn yeah, again. I just wanted to comment, not something doesn't have anything to do with the movie, but you were talking about corruption. I think it's worldwide. I think uh -huh. everywhere there's corruption. All these politicians, you think they're not corrupt? Yeah, I see it here in Aventura. Some things have been built where they should not have been built. Well, it's a corruption. So, and and how many women are raped and then and then they don't they the the she's a victim and and sometimes they don't even say anything because they're gonna go through trial and and nothing is going to happen to the perpetrator. So I think this is it, but I like the way that the 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 film made, maker showed that. It should have been that that should be a punishment because the the boys were punished at the end. Yes, yes, and 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 I don't want to. I certainly do not want to bring politics into the situation. So I I will let my silence speak for itself. Yes. Uh, I, okay, <laughs> I agree, but I have to say it because you said no. oh, Korea. Korea is so corrupt. It's everywhere. I understand. I understand. Thank you, Dora, for speaking oh, out. Sorry, I, I sorry. appreciate I it. I had to say it. <laughs> okay, Marilyn. Um, the thing that really, as I'm listening to all of this, and it was a beautiful film, but there was so much going on, and I found there was no communication between people. I mean, everything was very subtle, and everything was all of that. People, like you say, she prepared her grandson. She cut his nails. I mean, yeah. how do you prepare somebody for something as traumatic as this? That, to me, in my world, is not preparing. That's not your world. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. You're right. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's a whole other wow. cultural aspect. It's a whole, it's what we call, if you've heard it, inscrutability. The inscrutable, we've always said the inscrutable Chinese, you can't read their faces, you can't know what they mean when they say something. It's it's a uh it's 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 an Asian trait uh that things go unspoken uh and and intent uh is 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 very rarely, you know, it's it's don't ask, do. Uh, and she, you know, it's not just the cutting of his nails, you know, it's, 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 there are symbols, they're, it's symbolic, right. it's metaphorical, you know, it's, it's poetry, if you will, this is poetry, you know, and I cut his nails, 
but it says a lot. It says a lot in the mere act. In the mere act, it says a lot when you think about it. And I think that's, you know, the, the looking at the tree. It says a great deal about the individual and what's happening. Uh, and and this is the this is also the poetry of cinema, uh, but it, it it it's it's and I think you know that's what we also have to work our way through is the culture, is these cultural differences, you know it's another world being bad to us. But even as as Dora said, you know corruption is is universal. Yes, it is. It is. There's no question about it. But how it's handled can be. There are nuances. There are nuances in each culture. But as much as this is a global world, if somebody yeah. moves to a totally different culture, I mean, talk about culture shock, whether they come here and everybody's talking about feelings and you go there and nobody's nobody's talking about feelings. So well, go, well, go to how Singapore. global are we really? Yeah, go to Singapore and spit your gum on the sidewalk and watch oh, what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Barbara Tate. Um, I was going to say, Marilyn, it's not our world where it's acceptable to get together and decide how much damage is going to make something like this go away, which is obviously just an everyday thing. Well, this is worth that much and we'll all chip in and you know the mother will be assuaged by this you know generous offer and go on with their lives and the boys won't have this hanging over them i mean that really doesn't happen as openly here they're undoubtedly hush money but that seems to be just a cultural thing that you can pay off a, a, a crime not a misdemeanor a crime recompense That's somebody for it yeah, it it is it is it is another world. I mean, it's another side of the world. Uh, it's it's really another side of the world that we're looking at. Certainly, certainly. Thank you, uh, Bobby. You got to unmute, Bobby. Sorry, the grandson yeah. knew that she knew. He found whatever yes. something she brought home from the church, and then at the end, right. You know, she kept asking him about it. And at the end, she put the picture there, which she took. Yeah. He knew. He knew she knew. But he wasn't talking to her no matter what she did, because I think he had the same feeling. You know, maybe she's a woman. She doesn't mean much. I mean, I really, I'm not going to hit her or anything. But she doesn't, she's not, you know, she doesn't, she's there. But I'm a man, you know, she doesn't count for much of anything. I felt that was the way he felt completely. Yeah, well, uh, he, he did. This is what he's growing. The society's growing up into. Yes, yeah. I mean he's conforming, conforming. Thank you. And I uh, think. Fern. Fern. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she also so... had to work. She also had to worry about what was going to happen to the grandson as her dementia got worse. Well, yes, yes, uh, certainly. Uh, Fern. I. Um, I just wanted to say I, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. I thought it was beautiful. And I felt right from the beginning a profound sadness for this woman and for the life that she was leading almost as if she was invisible. I mean, she was raising this grandson who obviously... Didn't, who did not show her any respect, um, you know, uh, no affection. I realize that might be part of the part of the culture, but I felt so sad for her because she was just always trying to be happy, to find some happiness, and no matter where she turned, she wasn't she wasn't finding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was looking. She was looking for beauty in an ugly world. I mean, is basically what was happening here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she saw the ugliness and turned away from it to find the beauty. You know, whether it was the flower, uh, the apricots, whatever it was, she was looking for beauty uh, and realizing the world is pretty ugly. Uh, I think is what is what happens. At least she was making us realize that the world was pretty ugly. Uh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, thank you, Fern. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else out there? Oh, well, okay. This I thought this was 
Uh, terrific discussion. I thank you for that. Uh, and uh, next film up, we turn from a woman because these are two films about women. We turn from a woman in Korea and her situation. We go to France and for quite a different film. A, uh, I will tell you at the outset, a quite uplifting film. Uh, Kitchen Brigade. Kitchen Brigade. It's the story of a sous chef who works on a TV, a reality TV cooking show, which is as rampant, talk about cultures, rampant in France as it is here, uh, and uh, winds up walking off uh, and uh, whatever in a sense getting fired at the same time. And uh, she's finding it hard to get work. She winds up accepting a job at what she thought was a charming little restaurant and turns out to be a, a sort of halfway house for young migrant boys uh, who uh, are looking to be admitted into the country. And, uh, you know, their parents either sent them or they got there by other means and uh, is faced with a, a horror of a kitchen and a, uh, a sort of supervisor that doesn't seem to want to work with her. Uh, so it is, it is essentially a comedy of manners, but it is a very touching one, as you'll see as a result. It's, I think it's a terrific film. It's a beautiful film. And the kids in the film are wonderful. Uh, so I look forward to discussing that with you in two weeks. He said uh, it. He asked Ricky, okay. could you repeat the name? Yeah, sure. It's called Kitchen Brigade. Okay. Kitchen Brigade. And if you can't find it on Canopy, it's available in other places. I think it's on Amazon. Kitchen Brigade. Uh, and it's on and three weeks, February 28th. February 28th. Right. Right. So I will look forward to seeing you all then. Thank and you. And many so more, much. hopefully. Thank you. Thank now you. I have to now I have to watch it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, now you have to watch it. Uh, yes, and I, 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 nobody told me they were taking a poetry class. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> also, the cinematography was wonderful. Yes, nope. it was. Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about that. It was. It was one. It was wonderful. Yeah, it it was. You know what? It was. It, what's interesting about it? I'm glad you brought that up. Is you know, even though we're looking at Korea, it was very universal. Uh, mm -hmm. The cinematography, the way it portrayed people, the way it portrayed, you know, yes, we got to see certain houses that look differently. Uh, and but it was the real world. It was a real world. Uh, so I think that was terrific. Uh, so thank, thank you, you again. Time. I will Good see night. you in two thank weeks. You. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night, all. Night. Good night.